Using buses in your DAW can be the difference between a demo and a fully fledged professional sounding track. But it's also one of the most complicated parts as well. And I know this after working with over 700 students in the last three years and producing professionally for people all over the world. I know that buses can be one of the main places of confusion for music producers. And so today in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down a stupid simple guide to using buses using my stupid simple rules, which are what is it, how do we do it, and when should we use it? So let's break down the what first, but just to give you guys an example, um, right here, this is a question I got on my last video, on my last Stupid Simple, a Stupid Simple Guide to EQ, and someone said a Stupid Simple Guide on groups and buses, it would be really, really helpful. And so if you want more videos like this, you can literally just leave a comment down below on what you would like to see. So thanks for that comment there. Let's get into this. So what is it exactly? What are buses? And so I like to explain it using the water pipe analogy. A bus, as imagine you have four water pipes, each carrying water from a different source, like your tracks, your kick, snare, hi-hats, and your overheads. Instead of running each pipe separately all the way to the main water tank, which would be your master output over here, you could actually connect them into one larger pipe. And so I like to imagine it like this. So kick, snare, hi-hats, and overheads can actually all go to one bus. This is called a group bus, and there's two main different types of buses, and we'll get to the second type here in just a second. And so now all of them are going to one group bus. We'll call that GB for now. So that's what a group bus is is your kick, your snare, your hi-hat, and your overhead are all going to your group bus, and then that goes to your stereo out, or your uh, master channel, whatever you wanna call that, the main out. So then you can turn everything up, or everything down, or you can add plugins directly to just that water pipe, or just that sound. So that is a group bus. Now, how is that different from an effect bus, which those are the two main types. There's really three main uses for these, but there's two main types of buses. So first and foremost, we have our group buses. We were able to put everything all together. Your kick, your snare, your hi-hat, and your overhead were all able to go to one pipe, one water pipe. So all that water is now going through one water pipe, and you can put a valve on that, put your plugins directly on that. Turn everything up, turn everything down. But there's a separate type of bus, which is a parallel bus, or typically known as an effect bus, where you're able to actually have all of these be split out. So let's say we have our vox, our vocals, and it's going to our main out. Everything is going directly right here. But what if we wanted to also add reverb, reverbs and delays? What we're able to do is we're actually able to create a separate bus or a separate send and split the Vox signal to a separate bus. So instead of everything going to the same bus, we're now actually able to split it. We're actually able to put a T right here in the valve and actually send a separate signal across. And then we can add our reverbs, our delays, um, our saturation, or anything else that we want directly to this while leaving the main vocal untouched. So then we can turn our reverbs and delays up. We can automate those up and down. So that's what buses actually are. So let's get into the how. How do we actually create this? And there is a link down in the description below to a guide on how to actually create a grouped bus and an effect bus no matter what DAW you have. It's a Google Doc. It's right in the description below. And it basically goes into how to do that in your specific DAW. I'm using Studio One. And so I'm going to show you how to do it in Studio One. It's very similar to Logic and a lot of other DAWs as well. But let's start with the grouped buses. In a grouped bus, all we would need to do, we can see right here, let's say all of these vocals, we will select all of these vocals here, we can right click, and we can click on pack a folder. Once we click on pack a folder, it's gonna send these all to their own folder right here. And if we zoom in far enough, we can see this option right here. And we can select a bus, or we can go here and click on add a bus channel. And then boom, there we go. We have created that bus, and then everything goes to this bus. So I can turn all the vocals up or down just with this slider right here, or that fader. And I can add plugins directly to that. So I have Arvox, some saturation, and EQ that's processing the entirety of these vocals. I'm doing everything right here. So instead of 
all of these vocals. I still have plugins on all the individual vocals, but then I can compress everything all at once. So all the vocals are getting compressed and all of the vocals are able to get turned up and turned down with this fader. That is groups. Now, how do we create an effects send? So these vocals sound great, they're all together, but what if I wanna send some reverb and delay off of these vocals. Well, then we can create what's called a send. And so a lot of cases you can open up your mixer and see a send option. It's very similar in Logic. You can see a send option, you can click on plus, and then you can go to add a effect channel, or in Logic you would say add whatever bus is currently already available that's not being used, and then you can add your effects to that. Once you've done that, you've created that, you can route some of that audio to there. And usually there's a fader here. I'm sending negative 6 dB of gain split down to that. And so I can come over here and I can see that I have my main Vox effects. And they're all here. So you can see Room Reverb, Pro EQ, Compressor. All right here. And so I have all those effects right here. And I can turn up and down the reverb all based off of this section here. So let's play a quick section of this song and then I'll solo the vocals and turn the reverbs up and down. And then I'll also go to the group and turn the group up and down. And then we'll get into when should we use this because there's really three main uses for buses. And so let's solo the vocals, and this is what they sound like. Wash your hands, oh so now I can turn down, up and down the effects. This is the effect bus, so I can turn all the reverbs off. Hands, oh Sanctify what you've defiled. No more songs without surrender. That's the effect bus. I can bring in and out parallel processing like reverbs and delays, and I can add an EQ just to the reverb, which is why I really love doing this kind of stuff, or I can add a compressor just to the reverb for side chaining to the main vocals, for example, or some any other crazy things we wanna do, and it's not affecting the vocals because it's a split signal. Now, what about those group buses? What do we do there? So I can see here, I have these main vocals. Wash your hands, oh sinner. And I'm able to turn all the vocals up or down based off of that single fader. Sanctify world. No more songs with us. And what I have here is I have a bit of compression. I have a bit of saturation and then a little bit of EQ. Actually, I'm doing nothing. I just had the EQ open, so I'm not even really doing any EQ. Very simple, just trying to glue all the vocals together and then give them a little bit of grit before they eventually go to the main bus. So you can see everything here is being routed to this bus. So all of these vocals are going to Vox main, and then that is going to the main out. So those are the two differences. So now that we've gotten to that, what about when should we? So now we know what they are, we know how to do that. And once again, if you're curious about your own DAW, links to that will be down in the description, or you can just Google how to create a grouped bus or an effect bus in your specific DAW. And finally, when. When should we? Well, there's really only three use cases for creating a bus. Group processing, like all drums, guitars, or vocals, or anything else. We can instead send them all to one bus, process them all together. We can add an EQ or compression to a whole drum kit or all of the vocals at once, for example. Now, the second is time-based effects. We talked about adding reverbs and delays. Highly recommend doing this. If you are currently using reverbs and delays directly on the channel, I would really like to recommend putting it on a bus. That way you have more control over that reverb and delay. You can automate it up and down, and it's just way more control. You can add EQs and everything like that and it's just way more control than having it all inside of the plugin on the vocal channel itself. Putting it onto a bus really can help things just enhance it and give you a bit more control. Now the third is parallel processing, and you maybe have heard of this before, like parallel compression. When you split off an effect bus, then you can add an extra amount of compression or saturation to vocals or really anything at all, and it gives you that clean signal while having that 
processed signal right alongside it. It's great for parallel compressing drums and things like that. I won't get into the actual specifics of all of that. This is just a stupid simple guide to what groups and buses are and how to use them and when you should. If you like this video, you're probably gonna love this video here. It's another stupid simple guide to EQ. It was the last video I made and if you wanna see more stuff like this, let me know down in the description below or down in the comments below on what you would like to see next. What stupid simple guide would you like to see next on my channel? Now as always, go create.